Views and opinions are not necessarily that of Beyond the Strange, hosts, guests, and affiliated networks. Listeners are encouraged to conduct research and formulate their own opinions. Oh, this is Beyond the Strange. I am your host, Dave Cruz. And uh, we're just almost there with the uh, wonderful little gremlins that are in the in the Skype. I'd love to tell you a joke, Catalina. Believe me, I just don't know any funny ones right now. But I believe we do have our guests back. Um, and I believe our co-host is with us as well. Les, are you there by any chance? Well, that's a good question, Dave. Hey, there he is. All right. Am I here? Am I there? Am I anywhere? You are I'm, there. Uh, I'm nowhere, man, right now. <laughs> nowhere. There. Well, I uh, have to apologize to our guest. He's uh, being very patient, and uh, again, I want. I am very glad that he is uh, hanging in there with us. So, thank you again, Chris. I appreciate it. So, now I can do the whole. Thing. This is Beyond the Strange. I'm your host, Dave Cruz. Thank you, everyone, for uh, bearing with us. And uh, tonight we we got a great show. I, uh, other than these uh, dumb Skype issues that are going on, <clears throat> we uh, will be talking with Chris Keller a little bit later, who is a energy healer. And um, I'll let him explain everything because it's an amazing it's an amazing thing that Chris does. Um, but first, we are. Live at Spreaker, we are uh, streaming live at beyondestrange.com. You can also join us on Twitter at Strange Days 2015, and uh, use the hashtag and the letter B with the word Strange to join the conversation there. And you can check that out. Uh, people in there retweeting, putting stuff in there. Also, I want to remind you guys: well, we have a Facebook page, uh, Beyond the Strange. And uh, there you'll see uh, some information uh, for Chris. Um, there's some uh, YouTube videos that uh, you can check out. And uh, you can see exactly what Chris does. And um, he will also be letting us, he'll be talking to us here shortly. And, and we'll, uh, we'll ask him some questions later on uh, this evening. Uh, so, yeah, you could join us at Google Plus as well and Spreaker. Uh, just look for Beyond the Strange. Uh, call in with your Skype number, or Skype ID, I should say. Strange Days 2015 is our ID. And the phone line number is 707-200-3520. Also, um, my email address is dave at beyondthestrange.com. I have my email open. So please, um, if you have any email, or excuse me, if you have any questions, um, send them my way through email. Dave at beyondestrange.com. Um, right now, I am uh, going to be going here to talk with Chris here in a second. And what I'd like to do is just, you know, give a little background here. Chris Keller is a quantum energy practitioner, healer, who specializes in finding the trouble areas in the body and the stressors within that area by using the pendulum and chart method of dowsing. After working 30 years in the printing and newspaper industry, Chris retired in 2007. A door opened for Chris, which would lead him into the world of energy healing. Realizing that his intuitive nature was more than just a coincidence, Chris began taking courses in many different modalities. To his credit, Chris has found great success and certification in dowsing, pendulum, radionics, healing with metaphysical tools, and quantum touch muscle testing, applied kinesiology, foot bath detox, live blood analysis. Chris has learned very quickly that when working with universal energies, one must think not uh, just outside the box, but way outside the box. By this we mean all the possibilities need to be considered when working with a person's ill health. Chris's work has become a worldwide phenomenon in energetic and remote distance healing as he works with anyone and everyone in the entire world via Skype and telephone, which has gained him and his clinic worldwide notoriety. So please, everybody, help me welcome Mr. Chris Keller. Chris, are you with us tonight? 
I certainly am, Dave. Oh, Things there are going you well. are. Yes. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh! It's I, I'm telling you, Chris. Skype is just not my friend. It just continues to plague me. But we're working out the kinks. And thank you again for joining us tonight and for uh, being very patient. I really appreciate it. Not not a problem. It's a pleasure to be here, Dave. Uh, right on. I appreciate that. And Dave, we were kind of talking about the whole gremlin thing uh, just a minute ago while we were on, you know, together, but without you while you were running the show. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking, you know, sometimes it goes beyond coincidence when you start having these problems over and over and over again. It just depends which rabbit hole you want to go down. I, I, that that is right, brother. I, I, that, that is for sure. And uh, again, I just I want to I appreciate everyone's patience and. Uh, there we go. Now we have a show. <laughs> so, uh, Chris, can you please give us a little bit of your background? Just read some, but um, so you you say all over the world. Do you, do you people come through you to through your website? Um, I know you have some YouTube videos out there. Um, I've seen a couple. Um, can you explain how how it, it works though? Well, everything is done through my pendulum. Okay, so I developed this chart system. Number one, there's a letter chart from A to Z. So I'll swing my pendulum and it'll start to spell out a word. I've developed a way to use a pendulum that's very fast. Instead of holding it perfectly still, my arm is the pendulum and I hold my pendulum at the very nub of where the chain is. So there's no swing in the chain. And it works very, very quickly and it'll, it'll spell things out for me and just give me information. Any time of the day, I'll, it'll just start spewing out information about different things, about you know things that may happen in the planet, things that may happen with myself and, and just heads up about things. So in a way, it's, it's like channeling where some people go into a quiet consciousness and bring in a, a message or channeling uh, that type of way. My modality is the pendulum. I've tried doing the meditation and, and trying to get the messages verbally or, or, or through thought. Sometimes it does come through through thought. It's a very distinct thought that you have to pay attention to. But uh, all in all, the, the pendulum is by far uh, my modality. Teaching people how to do this is very rewarding and really makes you realize that the consciousness out there, there is something that's looking out for us. So when I'm working with Soul Source, I look at it this way. You're going to school. And you have a, a question. So let's say it's a math question. Are you going to go to the phys ed teacher to get that question answered? No, you're going to go to the math teacher. So right. if you have a question that only one, let's say, consciousness will know, you want to go straight to the source. So, so that's what we do. And I've really played a lot with the whole concept of God. And I've come to realize that anything that calls itself God is really not something you want to be working with because that when we think of a god we think of something that you bow down to and give gifts and pay homage and that type of thing that is not the consciousness that is what we really want to be working with ultimately what's happening in this day and age right now is something called the ascension some people call it the fifth dimension uh, consciousness there is a change in consciousness that is happening within the planet within humanity within the world it is an awakening. Mm -hmm. It is a, a rise in vibration that takes us past all of the veils, all of the fog, all of the stuff that is distracting us from, from knowing the truth, from knowing what's really happening. The, the age-old question is, why are we here and who put us here and, and what's going to happen to us? So because of the work I'm doing, I've had to learn a lot about what is happening within the universe, within our galaxy, within our planet, within ourselves, within our energy. And, and a lot has to do, number one, with reptilians. And people do talk about this phenomenon of these extraterrestrial reptilians. That is a very, very big component of who we are, what we are, and why we're here. When you're working with God, you're working with a reptilian. Okay, and I'm sorry to shatter some people's dreams and some people's thought patterns, but ultimately anything God is reptilian. Now, if you go back into time and Egyptian mythology, back into the days of the pharaohs and, mm -hmm. and all of that stuff, the biggest dark entities, consciousness that I'm fighting against is the consciousness of Thoth, consciousness of Set, the consciousness of Horus. Okay, those are the three big Egyptian, which are, by the way, reptilian. Okay, that's, that's what they are, and that's what they identify themselves as. That's what they're here in their last incarnation, let's say. Knowing this 
kind of puts things into perspective and it helps to understand exactly what's going on, what you're doing, why things are happening and how to better deal with it. The way my system works is through identification. I call it the hide and seek method. Whereas you're playing hide and seek and you say one, two, three on Chris, but it's really Dave. Well, Dave's not caught. So in the universal law of identification, if you identify what it is and you tell it to go, let's say somebody has a, a really bad headache all the time and I find the, the consciousness of set within this person's crown chakra and I tell it it has to leave and it has to go to a place where it can never come back, all of a sudden this person's headache goes away and it stays away, number one. The, the whole law of identification is very important. That's when you're doing this type of work, you learn about all of these things that are out there and not just going to the internet and reading whatever's there because 99% of it is all hoax. That's the, the real big thing that we need to come to realize. Everything that we've taught, everything that we thought is good actually isn't. The concept of light, you know, bringing in the love and light. You don't want to bring in the light. The, the light is a hoax. It's okay. all about love and it's all about soul source. So when you talk about the light, one concept is when we die, your consciousness will go into this tunnel of light and you go through it and you, you know, go to this land of beauty. Well, what that that light is, is a hoax to draw you in there and then the consciousness on that other side takes your soul and erases the memory and puts your soul back into the mix again. And you just keep on replaying this over and over again. That's, that, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot because, you know, it, it, it's almost like uh, from, what, from what I've learned, it, it almost seems like the opposite of uh, what I've heard about reptilians, when it, you know, what I've heard about... Uh, the loosh is what they call it, uh, you know, mm -hmm. yes. the negative energy, um, and um, and and also you know, the, the 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 vibrational change that's going on in the world. This is all fascinating. Um, how long did, did 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 it take for you to get all this information? I mean, it's, it just seems like a a lot. I, I'm already overwhelmed just by hearing it. It's come in spurts. So when I started doing this, I knew that there was removing an entity from the aura. And I never knew how deep it really went as to what it really was. And I learned about gray aliens and about reptilians and about archons and about these other species out there of consciousness, of beings. And of course, we can be here on this planet. There can be other species out there in the universe that have technology that can come and uh, interfere with us. And, and we don't even know they're here. I have seen a reptilian face to face. I was halfway th through sleep mm -hmm. and it came and looked at me face to face. <laughs> I, I looked at him and said, boo, and he took off. But um, <laughs> it, it, yeah, quite a while to get to where I am now. And every day is a new learning experience. You learn something new. A veil gets lifted. We're allowed to know a little bit more about what's happening uh, on a daily basis. It's really an ongoing learning. I do have a, a mentor. Uh, his name is Wayne Gatos. His, the name of his company is called Crystalline Incorporated. And he creates and makes all of my tools that I use, all my sacred geometry tools. And this guy, what he does for a living is he runs current into the earth grid in order to help clear it out for this whole ascension process. So he knows a lot. So from him, I do learn quite a bit. And then I also bring in about 90% of it when I'm talking with source through my pendulum. Mm -hmm. that, is, that is fascinating. Um, I'll tell you what, we're going we're gonna to take a quick break. And when we come back, uh, Les has a few questions for you. And also, I'd like to get into more of the uh, fifth dimension ascension, if you will. Uh, this is Beyond the Strange. We're speaking with Chris Keller, energy healer. And we'll be right back right after this. Don't go away.
Hey Beyonders, this is Kat from Our Precious Demise. You are listening to Beyond the Strain. On the Strange, I'm your host, Dave Cruz, and tonight we are speaking with energy healer Chris Keller, and uh, so far it's been a fascinating evening, um, and before we get back to the show, I just wanted to remind everybody that uh, just in a, about three or four days, Contact in the Desert will be uh, going on, and uh, we will be there, Beyond the Strange will be there, and we will be broadcasting live from... <clears throat> off Joshua Tree, but at Joshua Tree at the same time, uh, next week. And that'll be the same time, 6 p.m. Pacific, and it's just going to be an an amazing show. Uh, We'll try to gather as many guests as we can, and uh, it's just going to be great. It's going to be awesome, I I, I can tell you that right now. So remember, contacting the desert, Joshua Tree, it's going to be fascinating. So, uh, Brother Les, you have some questions for uh, Chris. Would you like to ask him? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, well, I was just going to uh, make a – just kind of like an interjection when he uh, when he talked about light and source, um, that uh, that really it's not about the light. It's about – you know. well, he said love and light. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to screw that up. That uh, that light uh, – that love is source. A- am I correct in, in saying that? That's pretty darn close, yes. Okay, because when I heal, I'm also going for source or what I, you know, I just call it by a different name. I just call it universal energy. Sure. Um, that's pretty much the same thing, I, I, I'm I, assuming anyway. Well, I, I think it's more so about intent, where your consciousness is. And if your knowledge and your consciousness, your soul, your heart is within the concept of source, which is what created our soul so again it's about our soul it's about our souls coming home it's it's about our soul being whole again if as long as you keep it in that consciousness and that's what i do i mean i've worked with people and used love and light and intended that you know thinking that i'm doing the right thing but like i said as we go on as we get more information when i'm told you know what stay away from the light because it's a hoax it's a trap Mm -hmm. yes Okay. Yeah, uh, you know that's that's very much along the lines of uh, of what my myself and uh, some other people that I know that are that are energy healers uh, believe that we we all come from the same source. Uh, we're all related. We're all part of the same consciousness. It's just that we're separated, and it, we're here to learn right now. Earth is our uh, Earth is our classroom, and um, and and we're all we're really all part of the source we really are all one the concept of the soul a lot of people think well it's your personality it's it goes a lot deeper humans are the only species in the universe that are able to manifest things through words and thought and this is all because of number one there is concepts within our dna that are very big about it but our soul the connection with our soul and the dna is the biggest thing and of course if, if any species in the universe can get a hold of our soul and what enables us to manifest, 
and they can weaponize it, while then, you know, any war that they're fighting would be over in a blink of an eye. So that is one very big concept is what is why we're going through so many problems here on this planet is because of the want for our soul by these different beings. Absolutely. Thank you very much for uh, uh, for answering my question. Uh, Dave, did you have anything that you wanted to ask him now? You mean besides continuing <laughs> the Yeah, just for please the show? continue. <laughs> uh, fabulous. <laughs> yeah, thank you, as a matter of fact. But th- no, thanks, Les. That, those, that was very interesting. And uh, yeah, Chris, uh, Les, time and time again, has come through for me um, as far as, as uh, sending uh, healing light and energy um, a few times when I've I've been uh, feeling either sick or just um, even you know depressed. Um, do you find that when people are depressed that you've uh, helped them out also? Well, let me tell you something about depression. Depression is not that big of a deal if you want to help somebody in an energy capacity to fix it. Depression and anxiety kind of go hand in hand, but depression itself, what it is is a separation between the human and its soul. And there's three different degrees of separation. When the person is disconnected from their soul, that creates one level of depression. When the the soul is disconnected from the well of souls within us, that's another level. And when that well of souls is disconnected from source, there's a third level. There's manic, chronic depression where you want to jump off a bridge and just end it all. What I have learned and what I've been doing with people with depression is just making the intent to reconnect the person to their soul, reconnect the soul to the well of souls, reconnect the well of souls to source. And all of a sudden, joy starts to come into your life. You start to feel like, wow, why was I so down? I can't believe I was so down. And it does work. And that is something that I work use within my practice on people every day who call in with anxiety and depression. Anxiety. Everybody goes through anxiety. You get that heaviness in your chest. You get that little thumping in your heart. You get that panic coming on. And it gets to the point of chronic panic attacks. Is this stinking reptilian within your sympathetic nervous system causing the fight or flight system to go into overdrive thus causing the creation of louche that they can feed off of because they're hungry so whenever they're hungry they just turn on your sympathetic nervous system and here comes the gravy train that's that sounds about right from what what i've learned also um especially about the louche um that's what we're going through right now in, in society today. Uh, and a lot of it, in my opinion, has to do with the mainstream media. They're causing all this chaos and all this anxiety and just just a bad, bad vi- vibe and, and energy, you know, throughout, you know, everybody's daily life. Whenever I don't tune into the news anymore. I, I used to try I, I used to you know catch up on the news and see what's out there it's just it's all it's all bad and it's all bogus in my opinion um well what i've been doing is i, I do watch the news i get up in the morning i make a coffee put a little bit of maple syrup in there a little bit of half and half cream turn on the cbc news in canada and see what they're bullshitting up about I, I use it for entertainment and then i sometimes i'll take what they're saying pit it against what I'm getting in information and see where the validity is, see if there's any correlations and, and see if there's anything I can use out of that news. And most of the time there isn't, but you want to see what the weather is going to be. You want to hear about certain things, but all the deep subjects, the wars that are going on that we don't know about, all the stuff that's happening that we don't know about, the behind the scenes, of course, that all the mainstream news is controlled by the governments, it's controlled by the Rothschilds, it's controlled by reptilians, whatever. Mm. And you're not going to get the straight story. It's just not going to be that way. I worked for a newspaper for 30 years. I know all about porking. I know all about taking a legitimate story and turning it into something that's more enjoyable for people to read. Um, porking, that's an interesting uh, term that you just use. I don't think I've ever heard that uh, before. Yeah, it's a newspaper newsroom group called Torking, and they'll oh, take Torking. a story and they'll change it to make it sound more interesting. The twisting, you know, that kind of thing. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. twist the truth, add something that's not supposed to be there. I mean, that, they'll, they'll make a story out of something. I got you. And, then, and for those of you listening um, out there, uh, Chris did say Torking, not Porking. <laughs> So I just wanted I to make. I thought I heard porking too. <laughs> yeah, I, I wanted to make sure that everyone understood that. It, it, yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't the other word. 
Uh, back up a little bit, Chris. I know that uh, I know you're from Canada because I can hear it in your voice. <laughs> but um, you, you you said you put maple syrup in your coffee. Oh yes, you don't want to put sugar in your coffee. When I use a sweetener, I'll use maple syrup. It's 100% organic. It's got the sweetness. You need very, very little of it. And maple syrup is a good detoxifier for your bowel. So I'll, I'll use maple syrup instead of sugar or other garbage. What What do you recommend to people out there? And I, and and I know that you 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 know where I'm going with this as far as the um, diet goes. Uh, when it comes to you know keeping your body you know not only fit but probably also as as a a better temple if you will for your for your uh, for your spirit your soul energy i mean is, you don't want to you don't want to eat gmos you don't want to eat all the garbage that's out there um like you just said you know refined sugar of course it's 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 terrible for you and then you know i don't even want to get into corn you know um the corn syrup that's out there it's it's, it's um not even corn syrup it's uh I can't even Genetic, think of it. Genetically modified garbage is what it yeah, is. Yeah, pretty much. Right, right. Uh, but but you poison. know what I'm talking about. I do work with people's health on a daily basis, eight, nine clients a day, five days a week. Excuse me. The big thing that does come up is your diet. If somebody is experiencing a health problem, one of the questions I'll ask is, what is your diet like? I always tell people, look, if you want to stay healthy, Number one, just eat a balanced diet, okay? You don't have to cut out the gluten. You don't have to cut out all this, that, and the other thing. Day, three meals a day, you want probably 70% of that to be vegetables. You want 10% of that to be proteins and the rest fruit. And just eating healthy. I'll be completely honest with you. My diet is not the best diet in the world. Am I healthy? Yes, I am. I'm doing pretty darn good for my age. I just turned 54. You know, as far as I'm concerned, I got a clean bill of health. I'm sitting here drinking a glass of wine right now. It's the weekend in Canada. We have a glass of wine, eh? It's all good. Stay conscious about eating the right things at the right time. Keeping as little carbs out of your diet as you can is always a good thing because the carbs are the most processed of any food. Keep the protein levels at a certain range, and you want to supplement your protein maybe a little bit with a protein powder maybe twice a week. Mm -hmm. Stick to lots of vegetables, lots of fruits. All of the processed sugars is what is killing the world. I was going to say, you know, uh, to verify that, I mean, they did a study in the 1960s or 70s uh, that proved, you know, they took back when they could do testing on animals, uh, when it when it was quote unquote okay. It's never been okay, but you know what I mean. Um, they fed, you know, they gave two. They took two dogs. They took one on pre, you know, and they fed it sugar water. They fed the other one straight water, or, or let the other one drink straight water. The dog that drank the sugar water died first. Yes. Sugar will kill you. Then you get into the, all of the artificial sweeteners, the aspartame, sucrose, all of that stuff. Is, it's all chemical. It's all garbage. It's all, it's all chemical poison. Aspartame is actually a chemical a chemical byproduct that uh, they, they force fed us and said, oh, use this instead of sugar, but it's actually poisonous. Right. Yeah. I, you know, I, oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to add to that that I, I don't know how true it is, but I also uh, – heard from an, another show or a podcast whatever you want to call it that uh, as, the uh, as, aspartame is actually made from bacteria feces I don't know if any, well, any, <laughs> any of you guys heard that but that's uh, that's that's rather disgusting I mean uh, <laughs> from from the way they created I guess that that you know talk about a byproduct that's that's just gross one of my biggest projects right now is working with people with diabetes and, and I'm trying to find the exact conspirator who's involved in different forms of diabetes and you got about you know four McDonald's. or five different forms of it. <laughs> there it is started with with that stuff I know you know in your line of work you, you just find people out of balance all the time well when you talk about balance now let's talk about minerals in our body now the number okay. one thing in our body is minerals we all talk about enzymes and probiotic and the microbiome and all these different things vitamins the mineral component in your body is very crucial to have balance and let's look at the balance of copper and zinc this is probably one of the most crucial balances that you need to maintain if your zinc levels go very low 
for whatever reason, your copper levels will then go high. There's something called copper toxicity. Dr. Lawrence Wilson, copper toxicity syndrome. You will see a list 25,000 miles long of all the symptoms that are caused by copper toxicity. I'm working with a person in Winnipeg right now with ALS. I've been removing copper toxicity out of her nervous system. All of a sudden, she's getting movement in her arm. She's starting to feel different. She's noticing changes. So copper toxicity, you name the health problem, and copper toxicity could be involved. So I'm always testing people's zinc and copper levels just to make sure that they're okay. Uh, another big one, of course, is sodium and potassium. If you're having heart palpitations, if you're having... Uh, high blood pressure, you know, the sodium potassium, if one goes down, one goes up. So you always got to make sure that, that those are leveled. So, so the mineral component is a very, very big problem within a health problem. So I, I, when I do my work, I'm always looking at, at the physical aspects, which could be a mineral imbalance and, and the mineral excesses, uh, you know, such as iron excess in your body. Oh, here's a big one. If you're iron deficient, it's, you're iron deficient because you're copper deficient. Mm -hmm. So you need to make sure that if your copper is low, your iron is, is going to be low also. So if, you're, if you're, uh, your zinc is really high, your copper goes down and your iron goes down because copper is, is a, a helper to help the iron absorb into your red blood cells. So many doctors say, oh, you're iron deficient, you need to, need to take iron pills. And then all of a sudden, now you've got iron uh, uh, overload problems, hemochromatosis in your liver and your uterus. If you have endometriosis, you've got iron buildup in your uterus. And that's, that's basically what it is. So, so the balance of minerals. So if you're going to take any supplement, take a broad spectrum liquid colloidal uh, mineral supplement just to keep everything balanced out. And being liquid, it's water soluble. So you're never going to get too much in your body. You'll just pee it out if there's too much. I know we're we're coming up uh, on a break here in a couple of minutes, but um, just kind of describe that to our listeners. Um, what's going on there with the fifth dimension ascension? As a human, we're coming into this time, and you can call it the age of Aquarius, and it's all about planetary and astral alignments. Alignment's going to happen. That's going to trigger a consciousness shift within humanity, and it's happening already. And I, I see it every day within myself. I see it every day within my clients and people. And what it is, we're just going to have, all of a sudden, we're going to have this big aha moment that there's something going on that nobody's been telling us. And we're going to all of a sudden realize, hey, wait a minute, I'm watching the news and they're not telling us everything. I'm going to work and, and the same thing keeps on happening over and over again. There's something going on and it's something that I know I need to research and, and learn about. And that's when people start going on the internet and they're finding radio shows like yours, and they're learning about all this stuff that, hey, this is resonating. And all of a sudden, they feel in their heart that it feels right. And that's what where the resonation happens in your heart. And then the people know that, okay, I need to be more open-minded. I need to be looking outside the box more. That's really what it's all about. And also what it's about is the ability to manifest. All of a sudden, we're going to be re-given this gift to be able to manifest whatever we need within our lives. That is awesome, and I totally agree with that. You know, the mainstream media again—they're not going to tell us what, what's happening, what's really happening with the world. Um, and, and and as far as I'm concerned, everything is a smokescreen. I, I mean, I don't know if you got to see that one video on YouTube where it, it, it was taken as a joke. I think it was on Conan, um, late night with Conan um, O'Brien. And there were, he was showing this video where he's taken a bunch of different news clips from all. all <laughs> I see. Oh, yes, I have. Yes, and they I all have. start saying the same exact. Thing. It, it's hilarious, but at the same time, I find it frightening because there's somebody that's actually telling them what to say, and that's scripted. It's scripted. It's my opinion, and you know that. But and again, you know, that's what the show is. It, you know, it's we're not trying to say that this is you know the last word, but in my opinion. The mainstream media and, and all and all the other you know minion you know uh, studios and and and, and, and news news uh, casters, um, they are all reading from a script. And somebody's writing this script. Who it is, you know, of course, it's yet to be seen. But I I believe it, it has to do with with a really 
devious agenda that's that that's getting closer and closer. But um, Chris, we're going to go to another break, uh, and when we come back, I'd like to uh, hear more about this uh, sacred geometry healing. All right, so we'll go, we'll do that, and we'll be right back. This is Beyond the Strange. I'm your host, Dave Cruz. We're speaking with Chris Kelly. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Bunker from Louisville, Virginia, and you're listening to Beyond the Strange with Dave Cruz and LJ3. <laughs> Welcome back. This is Beyond the Strange. I'm your host, Dave Cruz, and we are speaking with Chris Kaylor. And I, I apologize, Chris. I've been saying Keller all, all night. You're <laughs> I, probably I've like heard it cringing. So many ways, it doesn't even bother me. Anymore. You're probably cringing every time I'm, I'm saying it, and I, I apologize for butchering it. Um, I want to remind everybody: the call-in number is seven zero seven two zero zero three five two zero. If you have a, a question for Chris. Um, also, you can also send your questions through the email. You can email me at Dave at BeyondTheStrange.com. And as a matter of fact, I just got a question through email from Rick. And Rick says, hi, I'm listening to your show and looking at this. You, at, oh, looking at your, your YouTube channel, um, Chris, and the website. And he says, he, um, I have heard many 
speakers on the subject of reptilians and ETs, but have never heard your questions perspective, uh, or your, I'm sorry, your perspective on how aliens are affecting people's health. My question is how common is that, uh, that you find that, Chris, is, um, are, how are aliens affecting our, 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 our health on, on the people of Earth? Well, okay, if you're a human being, you have a reptilian, unless you've done a session with me or somebody else who does work like myself and have removed this reptilian. Let's, let's go to some reality here. We are here as humanity in this seating on this planet because of the reptilian. They developed us, they created us, they fashioned us, and put us here for their slavery, for their use. And a lot of people are shaking their heads, yes. That is the number one reason why we're here. Now, of course, these different species of aliens, they don't eat food like we do. We don't, they don't grow crops and, and have animals and, and create their own type of food. What they eat is energy, and that energy is called louche. So when the reptilian is hungry, that reptilian will create emotions of anger hate. Different types of anxieties will be created. Th this energy will be expelled from your body and they will use it for their own good. That is a big one. Also, we're here for the whole concept of experimentation. We have 12 different species of different beings within our DNA. Okay, that is an experiment. We are an experiment. The whole concept of uh, ET and how they affect us and why we are sick is there's many reasons it, it goes on and on the concept of them doing dna experiments would explain a lot of things uh, i think we've all seen that the guy on the tlc channel where he it looks like he has bark as skin different people with mutations that are going on with their body are dna experiments gone wrong within them and mm -hmm. that is just the down and dirty that's what it is mm -hmm. now you know you get into small little health problems and and here's two of the big ones the shingles virus or herpes zoster and Lyme disease are reptilian viruses. They are reptilian brought here to affect us. Okay, they're not natural on this planet. 99% of the time when somebody has a health problem, it's due to one of these viruses in certain levels. And, you know, the medical community will look at a shingles or herpes zoster virus. If they don't see it on your skin, you don't have it. But what I find is that we all have a certain degree of this virus within our bodies, and it can be used against us to cause certain problems. The same with certain fungus, and there's a fungus called hyphomacet fungus, which is microscopic. This fungus does have consciousness, and it can be directed to go to different areas of your body and to do different things at different times. The whole concept of what the ET, what the reptilians are doing to us is everything. If you have a health problem, if you have any kind of problem in your life, it is generally being caused by a reptilian alien. Okay, Rick, I, I hope that answers your question, and uh, thank you for answering that, Chris. Uh, I believe uh, uh, Les had a, had a quick question he wanted to ask you. Yeah, um, Chris, you know, I've heard a lot of things, you know, from a lot of different people, a lot of different podcasts, a lot of different speakers uh, about reptilians. And I, I guess my question is, is what is your take on uh, how the reptilians got here? Did they get here? Uh, you know, my take on it was they were here. Uh, they were here before uh, before mankind. Uh, that they they left the planet and came back, uh, or have been here all along. Um, what's your what's your take on the, on the reptilians and where did well, they come from? There's only a few people going to be able to answer that one, and they're not on this planet. Yes, the reptilians have been here for a long, long time, thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of years, let's say. If you look at in Egyptian mythology of as I said before, Thoth, Set. Horus, body of a human, head of a bird, these are reptilians, and they were within the Egyptian time, and they were manipulating that era too. Buildings all around the world, Machu Picchu, you look at all the pyramids, the Bosnian pyramids, Egyptian pyramids, China pyramids, you know, these are all created by something other than a human, 
okay, or or something that was human that that was seeded here many lifetimes ago that had the technology to do all this stuff. So our planet has been used in many ways, shapes, and forms for different humanity seedings for different species. There's been a lot going on. This planet's been around the, the block more times than the ice cream man, let me tell you. There's, and it, it just shows with everything that we're experiencing, everything we're finding and seeing. It just is not that something that a human could do, okay? No matter what machinery you have, they could not recreate the pyramid. So we know that some other species, some other consciousness, something of a high technology, something of, of a high perception of how to use energy was here before us. And, and were the reptilians part of that? Yes, indeed, I'm, I'm quite sure they were. Very interesting. The, I mean, again, this is just all new information that I've, I'm hearing tonight. And I'm, I'm, this, this is exactly why I do the show, Chris, is because I learn so much. And, you know, I, I, I get to take a lot or whatever I want from what I, what I hear and I process it. And I, I stay open, man. You know, that's how it is. Um, you know, that, that's what we got to do. And especially, you know, how you have your show and it's, um, you know, it, it's really great that, you know, the information is getting out there. Let's talk a little bit about sacred geometry, geometry healing. Mm -hmm. um, well, go ahead. Please. The pyramids of Egypt, the pyramids of Bosnia, that's all geometry. Circles, squares, triangles, rectangles, doctahedrons, tectahedrons, all these different forms of geometry create a certain vibration. So when you're using that geometry within your healing method, you're working at a certain vibrational level. The type of geometry that I use specifically, it's called a vesica Pisces. And if you were to Google the word vesica Pisces, you would see a lot of different pictures uh, of different things. And it basically looks like a football with pyramids inside of it. Specific pyramid structure does is it facilitates the incoming feminine energy into the planet. We were always run by a masculine energy on this planet and is now taken over by a feminine energy. And it also creates doorways into the fourth and fifth dimensions. When you're using it, you're working at a much higher level of consciousness, at a much higher level of energy. I used to use a pyramid called uh, the Silver Light Pyramid that was developed by some colleagues of mine. And this was a very elaborate looking piece of equipment. It was five different pyramids stacked at right angles on top of each other, soldered together, and then flooded with quartz crystals and magnets and other geometry within it to create this different energy. I've since put that aside and started using this different form of geometry to facilitate these new energies. So everything has a purpose. A sphere has specific purpose. Now, if you look inside a sphere, mm -hmm. within the geometry of it, there's a square, there's a rectangle, there's a triangle. All those geometries exist within a sphere. So when you're using these geometries, it, it, it does just bring you up to those certain types of energies. Now, there's one set of rings that I have. I use a ring called a neutralization ring. What it does is this neutralization ring will pull off negative energies that attach to your body on a daily basis. So let's say you're in a situation where there's a lot of yelling and screaming and a lot of negative things happening. And when you get out of there and you feel drained, you stand over this ring and all of a sudden you feel a lot better because it pulls all that negative vibration that your aura absorbed. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that is something that people would feel all of a sudden very heavy. They would feel all of a sudden like they're moving back and forth. As a matter of fact, we can do a little demonstration right now if you feel like Dave. Sure, absolutely. So, so anybody who's listening, even if you're listening on a podcast, if you follow these instructions, you're going to feel this energy. So lesson, Dave, what I want you guys to do right now is just stand up. And anybody listening, if you want to participate, stand up. Everybody stand up. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to intend to put one of these neutralization rings between your feet. So here's the intent. Place a gold neutralization ring between Dave's feet, Les's feet, and anyone who's listening. Place a gold neutralization ring between their feet. Now, it's going to take about maybe 30 seconds. All of a sudden, you might feel some sensation. So you tell me when you feel something happening. Do we keep our feet apart or just... Shoulder width is good, but no matter okay. what you it's going to work. Shoulder width, place a gold neutralization ring between their feet. 
And all of a sudden, you will feel possibly heaviness as if something's trying to pull you into the ground. You might feel like something's pushing you back and forth. You might feel some tingling. Feel a little tingling. Um, yeah, I'm starting to feel a little bit heavy. That's interesting. Give it another 30 seconds. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I'm starting to feel a little tinkling. That's in, yeah, okay. Dave, what are you feeling? More heaviness. Yeah. Start to get heavier as you go along, it seems. It starts to ramp up. Generally, we do this for about three or four minutes. Pulls the negative energies off. It clears the area, clears the aura, so that we can do some work at, at higher levels. Okay, you, you can have a seat now. <laughs> but yeah, Catalina, <laughs> Catalina and Jean both said, uh, you know, Catalina said her uh, they felt they feel heavy. Um, Howie said like gravity. <laughs> that was a trip. <laughs> That's all I can say. That was a trip. Wow, Chris. There's an example of intent, okay? Now, all of this work that I do and basically any other energy healer does is all about intent. When you're using your mind, your thoughts, and your energy to place an intent for something to happen, it's going to happen. All the work I do is intent. It's saying the words. So when I'm working with you and you have a liver problem, I will find that problem in your liver, whether it's hep C, whether it's fatty liver, or whether it's an entity, whatever I find, let's say it's you have hepatitis C in your liver. So I will take my pyramid. I will hold it up to the phone or hold it up to the Skype camera. If you're in my office, I'll hold it over your head, and I'll just make the intent, remove hep C from Dave's liver. And within 10 seconds, it's gone. It doesn't exist anymore. Wow. And no matter what it is, no matter what it is, uh, on Tuesday, I'm working with somebody with a brain tumor. Okay? They went for an MRI, and boom, there's this huge brain tumor, and it's not causing really any problems yet. But all of a sudden, whoa, we need to work with this. So I'm going to just make the intent to remove the brain tumor. Now, of course, with something like that, there's going to be other things involved. There's all the negative energies that are in front of it that put it there in the first place, that made it happen. We go through all the different layers and levels of what's in front of it, move it all out, and then we get to the tumor aspect, just make the intent for the tumor to go away, and boom, it goes away. Okay, sometimes you need to do multiple sessions to get it all, but eventually it does happen. That's intense. That really is. Open to other practices out there that work. Yes. I'm going to elaborate on that, on how, how I do that. I do the exact same thing, but in a different way. And my favorite saying is many ways to cook a potato. What I do when it comes to karma. Now, if you go back into past lives, if you, in a past life, you were doing witchcraft, if you were doing shamanic spells on people, if you were a very big demon worshiper and that type of thing, that creates a negative karma. So your soul is in a dark place your soul is being controlled by the dark so in this lifetime all of a sudden you're trying to do some good things that dark soul is going to say uh 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 you cannot leave this gang we're going to beat you up a third of all of my clients are healers that are extremely sick Mm -hmm. and that is because in past lives they did bad stuff and this life they're trying to do good stuff it's not going to happen so to clear that karma What I do is I find out what life it was. It might be life number 2, 7, 15, whatever it is. And what I do is I disconnect, just make the intent to disconnect that past life from the soul, from the time matrix, from the DNA template and the astral field. All of a sudden, that life is now taken out of service. It is no longer existing. And it's not about forgiving karma or anything like that. It's just taken out out of the whole scenario. And then it opens up the door in order to find out what the real problem is on a physical level. Do I agree with other practices? 100%. There's things out there that work so well for some people and don't work for other people. That's because you got to find the right fit, and other modalities work, and there's no doubt that they work, okay? If mine works, <laughs> everybody else has got to work too, as long as you're doing it with the right intent, you're doing it with love, and you're doing it with, with some good energy. It's all on how you cook your potato. It's all how you, you've learned something. So if, if that's how you learn it, that's what's working, go for it. It's doing a great job. That's a great answer. I I, I really appreciate that. Uh, 
Rick has sent in another email, uh, another question. And uh, for those of you listening out there, I am taking only questions from email or if uh, if it's all right with Chris, um, call in and uh, maybe they can ask you directly. Uh, I'd love to take a caller. Awesome. So the number is 707-200-3520. And uh, the question that Rick has uh, sent in is he wants to know if you appeared on Fade to Black with Jimmy Church. I have not been on Fade to Black with Jimmy Church. I, I've been on uh, uh, with, with Carrie Cassidy. I've, I've done an interview with her. I've, I've done uh, Caravan to Midnight with John B. Wells. But I have not. I've been talking with Jimmy Church. He actually, Jimmy Church was, he was on, on my your show. Not, he was on my show not too long ago. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> that was a great interview. By the way, um, <laughs> it, was really, fun. it was fun. It was interesting. That was really cool. And and he did did want you to demonstrate the way way your healing energy works. But um, we just got that. So <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> but that's awesome. Um, Man, this is all this is all amazing. Yeah, that was a that was a really really a trip, Chris. What do you, how do you explain that to people when when you say okay? Because people can can people kind of sometimes get um, maybe worried or something, you know, um, freaked out. <laughs> when you're telling somebody that you can do this healing work, you know, a lot of people. I meet people every day, and they, and the first question was, "What do you do for a living?" I say, "Well, how open minded are you?" Started off with talking about alternative health, and they go, "Oh, okay, yeah, I know somebody who does something," and then start talking a bit about it. I come from a very deep-rooted Mennonite background, uh, which can be compared to to Hutterites and Amish and that type of thing. Uh, when I go back to the homeland for family reunions, they all look at me like, "Chris, are you okay? You know, do you need uh, healing yourself?" And and I say, "No, <laughs> I'm well taken care of, and everything is good." But they just don't seem to understand that I've awakened, I've opened my mind, I've gone to this level. <laughs> No, that's it's all good though. I mean, you know, this is just amazing stuff. And ah, oh, here we go again with the Skype um, problems. They're just they're just plaguing the show, and they're not going away. So uh, I apologize to all of you who are trying to call in. I don't know what's happening here. Um, I know that uh, uh, one of our listeners and and friends of the show, Eric Awakening Man, is trying to call in, but. Um, unfortunately, I'm I'm just not able to answer the phone right now, and I don't know what's going on. I really hate this that this is happening, but um, please, everyone, just be patient. Uh, we'll try to figure this out. Uh, but uh, definitely, if you have any if you have any questions, uh, please email me to uh, Dave at BeyondTheStrange.com, and uh, we'll figure out the Skype thing uh, sooner or later. It's just it's it's just really been a hassle. Um, uh, but I got some other, you know, some other questions for you, Chris. And, uh, one of them, we're coming up against a, another break here. The last break, as a matter of fact, this time is just goes, goes by too fast. Um, you, you, the remote distance healing, um, like you just demonstrated right now is, is that for everyone or are only certain people, uh, able to, to, to get that, that, um, experience? One of the big questions I do get is, do you have to be spiritual? Do you have to be open-minded? Do you have to give permission? To that is basically no. Talk about, you know, will it work on me? That's fear. Or somebody's mother calls and says, can you please stop my son from seeing this girl? She's no good. I can't do that, okay? If, if there's a someone who has a brain tumor and they're not into this work, they don't believe in it, but if uh, the person's mother believes in it very wholeheartedly and wants me to work on, on her son, I can do that. I can work through the parent onto the child. I can work on the child through the parent. I do it very, very often without them knowing. Because, number one, this is going to benefit them. You can't cross certain lines, but you know what? If, if you're sick, I'm going to help you no matter what. Okay? And even if you disagree uh, religiously or your belief system says that this stuff is, is not good for you, I will do it anyway because number one, you know, you, we all deserve to have good health. We all deserve to be happy. To me, it's not crossing any lines as long as you're not making somebody's free will doing something that they wouldn't want to do. Very good. 
All right, well, let's go ahead and take a break here, our final break. And when we come back, we'll get into some more questions. And uh, perhaps I can even ask you if you oh, we'll, we'll, I'll ask you after, after the break. So we are talking with Chris Kaler, and this is Beyond the Strange. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Remember what Professor Snidely, myself, always says. It's not the size of your brain that counts. It's the weight. And remember, Beyonders, listen to Beyond the Strange. Sundays, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. Hey, are you strange? How strange are you? You should listen to Beyond the Strange, hosted by Dave Cruz. Sunday evenings at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Look behind the curtain of perceived reality to the strangeness beyond. Keep up with us on Twitter at hashtag be strange. Do you believe in UFOs? Time travel? How about ghosts or Bigfoot? Greetings to all you Beyonders out there. This is Dave Cruz, host of Beyond the Strange. I wanted to personally thank each and every one of you for tuning in. Beyond the Strange is not your typical podcast. We want to hear your stories and experiences. This is the radio program for you, the listener. We bring your stories and concerns to the table. So check us out live every Sunday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And remember, Yonders Believe.
Welcome back. This is Beyond the Strange. I am Dave Cruz, your host, and we are speaking with energy healer Chris Kaler. And it's been a fascinating evening tonight. Thank you so much, Chris, for joining us. I really appreciate it. You're so very welcome. It is my pleasure. And it is our pleasure to listen to you. Um, it's, it's just been fascinating. And I got to apologize to everybody out there who's trying to call in. I actually reset Skype. Um, <laughs> and, um, I'm sorry, uh, Bev, I know that's probably you trying to call and Eric, that's probably you tried calling earlier. All I could say is Skype sucks. <laughs> so <laughs> we, well, I'm going to, I'm going to find a number to get a hold of someone from Skype, uh, this week and get this fixed once and for all. It's just, it's just driving me nuts, but Let's get back to the show. Uh, and um, again, for you, those of you guys have a, a, a question, please send it to Dave at BeyondTheStrange dot com. Uh, Rick's been doing a fantastic job sending uh, emails, so that's uh, that's something. Uh, as a matter of fact, we just got an, another uh, email, and this one comes from our brother Gigi. Um, by the way, Gigi's not feeling good, so he couldn't join us tonight, but uh, he does have a question for you. And um, Chris. He wants to know, um, are, are you involved in, in masonry? Oh, absolutely not. Now, funny you should say that. Masonry is a form of the Illuminati, more so in, in the higher ends of things. In Winnipeg, our parliament building, our legislative building, is designed as a Masonic temple. If you go into there and you do a tour of it, you will see sacred geometry beyond sacred geometry. Every room has its own dimensions that equal a certain geometry. There is so much going on in that building when it comes to dark energy. It's unbelievable. Now, here's one concept to think about. With the success that I'm having, the, the good things that are going on, the amount of times I see somebody in my office from Winnipeg is about once a week. One appointment per week out of 40 is in my office. Everything is outside of Winnipeg. Winnipeg itself has got something going on with it. I haven't figured out what it is yet. Some kind of spell, some kind of witchcraft. Winnipeg is a very big native origin center. Mm -hmm. Something is going on here that we just don't know. And it could have something to do with, with the legislative building. That's really not cool. That's not cool at all. Uh -huh. I've been in that building to check things out, to feel the energy. And there are some places designed in certain ways. There's one area called the Pool of the Black Star. There are choirs that go in there and sing, and the resonation that happens within that room is amazing, the way the room is designed. So there's a lot, so much going on. I've been in there trying to figure it out, but there's something still holding back, still something that says, you can't find me yet. Wow. That's... That's just that's just cray cray. Another <laughs> yes. a second a second part to uh, Gigi's question. He asks, "Are the Anunnaki and the reptilians related?" The Anunnaki don't really come into play unless we haven't got there yet as to being able to clear them out. So right at this moment, it's it's basically reptilians, those Egyptian gods. It is something called the, the six god curse on humanity. This curse is created by six different gods. And it's, it's a curse designed to keep our vibration low so that we don't ascend, go into this higher consciousness. All right, Gigi. So if uh, you're listening, then I'm going to say that uh, Chris had just answered your question. And Les has a question that he'd like to ask you. Yeah, um, Chris. Okay, you talked to Gigi earlier, remember? Okay. Yeah, um, he, he was – he's one of our – you know, uh, he's one of our co-hosts as well. Uh, he was on the line with us when we did our uh, test. One of the questions I had for you is, you know, you said you could heal people over the phone. Um, yes. Could you – now, Gigi actually broke his uh, – separated the muscle from his collarbone and broke his collarbone. Okay. Um, is there any way you can help him out? while not on the phone? I could do something right now that might ease the pain and, and lessen what's going on and start the healing process. Now, ultimately, there's a reason why his collarbone broke. But what, what I will do, I'm going to make an intent 
What I'm going to do is make the intent to send stem cells into his body to repair all the damage. Okay? This is for Gigi. Now, if, he, if he's on the line listening, he's going to feel something coming in. So I'm going to take my Vesica Pisces, hold it up to the computer. Within Gigi's collarbone and all muscles within levator scapulae, all the neck muscles, shoulder muscles, send stem cells to repair and heal all damaged areas. I'm going to give that a minute or so to go in and sink in. Okay, I can feel it pulsing in on my end. There it is. There it is. Okay, that is now in. Yes. He's in Spreaker chat with us right now, so oh, uh, he'll okay. he, he'll let us know. He is listening, so. And it'll happen very quickly. Oh, well, that's great. Yeah. So, yeah. Gigi, let us know when you feel something, all right? Yeah, definitely uh, shoot me another email when you, when, when you get that uh, sensation, Gigi, and... Um, and you can uh, thank Chris for that. <laughs> so we really appreciate that, Chris. In the beginning of the show, I remember you were saying that the gentleman that was working on your foot that got you into this um, process, the, you know, what you're doing now, he already knew what was wrong with you. Um, when when you go to a, when, when you have a client, do you are automatically know what's wrong with them? No, well, sometimes if they'll start to explain the, the, the symptoms that they're having, give me a bit of a history, sometimes it does all of a sudden, hey, I know what this could be. But for me, it's always with the pendulum. I always ask the questions in a certain way to get the right answers to be able to do the clearings. There are some people that walk in and I look at them and say, yeah, you've got a parasite. There's no doubt. You've got this. You've got that. But there's always all these underlying problems of a negative energy that need to be cleared out first in order to be able to get to it and, and find it and, cl and clear it out. Very interesting. Um, and um, I'm seeing a message from Les that uh, Gigi has contacted him, and he's saying, thanks, Chris. That, uh, <laughs> You're very welcome. That he definitely feels something, so that's that's really cool. Um, and earlier, our, our listener, uh, Rick, who's been emailing me, thank you very much, Rick, for your emails. I appreciate it. Um, has said, after Chris uses energy ring, I did feel dizzy, tied, and stiffness in my calves, but am I healed? No, you're, you're not healed. What we've done is just release some negative types of energy. The dizziness is generally some kind of entity leaving your body. It's, it's a vortex. The dizzy is, is a vortex of energy. So we opened a vortex and things started leaving your body, okay? So the, the tightness, the heaviness in your calves is very typical uh, as to using this ring, but the, the dizziness is a vortexing and something is, is definitely leaving. Okay. And a question that I wanted to ask you, uh, Chris, is when you do a lot of these um, shows and, and you, you do your demonstrations and you help people, does it drain you? Absolutely not. I do this eight hours a day. Sometimes I don't even take a lunch. And I'll go through the whole day and I'll leave and come home and play with my four-year-old boy and two-year-old girl for a couple hours and, and still be in good shape. You do get tired. I mean, it, it is a little draining on you. But there are a lot of people who do the energy thing for a living and they can only do so much before they're completely drained out because they may be doing it in a way that is taking all of their energy out of their body where I'm just using intent where they may be using the energy within their body. There could also be something they're doing wrong, which would make them very tired. But for me, generally, it's not a bad day if I leave and feel just a little bit tired. During the day, I'll do things like drink shungite water, I'll eat proper foods, and make sure I do things to keep my energy up, which is very important. But I think ultimately what I'm doing, because I'm using the geometry tools, Yes. I'm not absorbing the energies myself. The tool itself will absolve the energy and it'll send it off into ether where it just gets cast out into, into nothingness. So my body doesn't absorb it. I've been doing this for so long and I don't get sick. I don't get uh, any kind of symptoms that the other clients are having. I don't, I'm not empathic in the way that I take on those energies. And that was going to be one of my other questions as far as being empathic. Um, yes. You take on other people's energies, whatever their their negative is, does it affect you? But it, uh, it doesn't sound like it, which is actually a great thing. So I'm really glad to hear that. And um, so what I'm going to do right now is 
Les is actually taking questions for me from Spreaker, and we're doing this tonight because, unfortunately, we can't get our callers to call in, um, and that's Skype's fault. <laughs> Uh, Gigi actually said a few seconds ago, uh, wow, not only does my collarbone feel better, but I've gotten a burst of energy. Uh, thank you very much. Um, and actually, um, Beverly Noel was trying to call in a few minutes ago from Arcadia, Ohio. Now, she's a sister of ours that, uh, that's been, you know, God, we've been friends with her for years now. Um, and she's had, you know, lung, back, and knee problems, specifically knee and lung problems. Uh, could you send her some healing intent? Uh, let's see, knee, knee problems. Okay, okay, within the knees, Beverly's knees, uric acid crystals false. All uric acid crystals false. And uric acid crystals is the biggest component of arthritis. They're like tiny little microscopic surgical knives that cut away the cartilage and connective tissue, and they hurt like heck. Uric acid crystals false. Okay, those are moving out of her knees. Now, within the lungs, within the lungs, what we're going to do for her lungs is we're going to open the lung meridian. So Beverly's lung meridian, true. Lung meridian, true now within the lungs ph balance of 7.2 true raise the ph balance in the lungs to 7.2 true okay so that might help her a little bit now for something like that i would really have to a session of dowsing to find all the intricate little problems but that might give her a little bit of relief for right now whenever you open the meridian it always helps a little bit and whenever there's a lung problem majority of times it is a heart problem really want to go into there with the pendulum and find out exactly what it is that's awesome and as soon as we get the result from um from Beverly I'm sure she'll let she'll let us know in the in the speaker chat and- and Chris, thank you so much for helping my friends out. It, it means a lot to me, and I'm sure it means a lot to them. I really appreciate it. It, it is my pleasure. It is my. It pleasure. means a lot to me as well. I mean, I'm really glad that uh, you know that that you're able to do this, Chris. I really appreciate it all as well. And um, I just got another email from Gigi saying, "Chris, thank you so much. Also, that not only does his collarbone feel better, but that he got a boost of energy. Is that a yeah. typical?" Uh, Side effect, it, it's, it certainly is. There's always these heavy energies that are upon you when you're going through this type of thing. Like the pain brings your energy down. The, the stiffness brings your energy down. So when you lift all of that stuff off of you that's causing a pain, when you repair that area, all of a sudden your whole self feels better and you, you get a boost of energy. You're, all of a sudden your energy does come back. That is amazing. Um, and just, I don't want to like, keep continue asking you know, asking you to, to to heal everybody out there but we also have another dear friend that has been just plagued with dialysis um and is there any way that you can help her the answer is yes but that would have to be a session now i am working with one person right now who is going through dialysis and when there's a problem at that level there's always multiple 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 things that got to be cleared out it could take four or five six sessions so she's on dialysis, her kidneys are shutting down, there's something else going on within her. Uh, let's, let's do, what's her name? Her name is Lindsay, and she's from Australia. So Okay, Lindsay, oh, I love Australia, I love working with the down under. Okay, here we go, Lindsay in Australia. Kidney function and health, true. Kidney function and health, True. So all I did there is made the intent that her the function and the health of the kidneys goes to a higher level. When I say the word true, what that does is it does raise it up in vibration and it connects it directly with source. Uh, what's coming to mind within Lindsay's kidneys, calcium buildup and deposits false. Calcium buildup and deposits false. 
So we're clearing all the calcium out of, out of the filters. If you look at the way the body works, it's plumbing, it's filters, it's, it's different mechanisms like that. The heart is a pump, you know, the, the lungs are airbags. You, if, if you look at it as a filter, the filter gets clogged, things don't work, things back up into our body. So generally, it's going to be some kind of calcium buildup. Calcium is one of the biggest contributors of health problems out there. I mean, there's there's a lot of different things that, that are involved with a health problem, but uh, calcium is a very big one, especially if you live in an area with hard water. Sure. That's, um, that's definitely something to think about. And I, I understand that for, for people to get a, a more, um, I don't know, a better uh, understanding or a, a, a better diagnosis, it's probably better to co contact you directly. We can do little clearings and things might get a little better, but then all of a sudden they'll revert back. And that's because we didn't clear all the stuff that's ahead of it, all the stuff in front of it. And it could be past life things. It could be curses. If something runs in the family, it's a curse. And we can easily put a curse on ourselves, put a curse on somebody else just by thinking negatively about them. It puts a curse on you, creates an energy that creates a problem. So if something runs in the family, it's a curse. That's, that's the down and dirty of it. People who piss people off in the family every day. And there are there are family members who are get very jealous for certain reasons, and they will think negatively. They will talk behind your back and create a negative vortex of energy that comes over to you and creates this problem. Oh, that's horrible. I, I, I hate it to is. even think about that. That's that's really just that's just just terrible to, to even think that. Um, one more question before we before we let you go, Chris. Um, when it comes to entity intervention on the human health, and this is one of my my um, bullet points. Um, can you explain that a little bit? Different forms of entities. One of them is somebody in your life has died and their spirit still hangs around. And my late wife still comes and visits and, and freaks out my, my wife right now and, and mm -hmm. says, oh, she says, oh, Dell's back. Okay. Because she'll take a doll and she'll turn it around in, the, in a cabinet facing outwards or something like that. Spirits of somebody who have passed away can connect to your soul, can get into your aura, and that's going to cause a negative vibration within your body, and your body is going to react in a certain way to try and get your attention in the form of pain, in the form of depression, in the form of different things like that. Those types of entities are there for a reason. They're trying to get your attention, or they just don't know where to go after this plane. There's all kinds of things going on. So that's number one. Number two is all of the ET activity. And right now there is a huge war going around the sun. And I've got actual pictures of it from Lasco C2, Lasco C3, NASA satellites. I've got pictures that will blow your mind what's going on around the sun so there's all, all these these races of beings and the sun itself is a stargate we call it a soul gate and it's it's a very big one that these beings want control of there are beings called the sith and you'd think oh chris has been watching too many star wars movies <laughs> but there, where did steven spielberg get this stuff from right, right okay right. Yep. The Sith are there. They're very ancient. There are Palladians. There are Arcturians. There's good and there's bad fighting for the rights to the Stargate, fighting for control over it. They get involved within us, and they'll use our chakra system as a, a Stargate to come in and out of this planet to come and rest or to hide or something. I don't know. Maybe get some loosh, get some energy. And then let's say that they come through your heart chakra. All of a sudden, you start getting heart pain. All of a sudden, you, you start getting heart palpitations because they keep on using that chakra because it's the most powerful one. And you can be the most healthiest person in the world, but you're getting heart problems because it's being used as a stargate. So the whole entity thing is so incredibly important and huge that we need always need to learn more and more and more about it. It's, it's just that big of a problem. Mm -hmm. That's... There you go. That, that, that's, that sounds like it. Oh, man. We have just went through two hours. <laughs> it just went by so fast. Um, Chris, I'd love for you to come back on the show again sometime. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time um, and, and helping uh, our listeners as well and, and just giving us that demonstration. So ex where can we find you? My website is chriskaler.net, C-H-R-I-S-K-E-H-L-E-R.net. I am in Winnipeg, Canada, 
Send me an email. I will answer it tomorrow if you have any questions, any concerns. Go to my website. Look at my web store. I sell all of the tools that I use in my healing modality. I sell on my website and I teach you how to use them so that you can benefit for your health. I do have my course on the website. If you want to learn how to do this work, I will teach you how to do it. I've got students in India. I just brought one on from the Netherlands. I have students in Hawaii, Croatia, New Zealand, Australia, lots in the States. So far, i got 21 students who are learning how to do this and they're getting benefits out of it if you if you're interested in that also uh, I do have free dowsing charts on my website there's five different charts that you can download for free and there's also a video that you can watch that goes along with it to show you how to use them so you can so you can see if, if you're able to do this type of work check out my website lots of good information my YouTube channel's got tons of radio interviews and tons of little snippets of updates and information that I put on there so people can learn a bit more about this and Chris, I just wanted to say thank you again. It was a pleasure talking to you, sir. And uh, keep up the good work. Thank you yeah. so much. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. We're definitely going to be keeping in touch with you, Chris. And um, I myself, again, want to thank you for coming on the show. Um, it, it's, it's been an amazing, amazing time here on uh, Beyond the Strange. And once again, just, just thank you very much. Thank you um, so much. Many blessings to both of you. You too. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Okay, well, that's that's the end of the show. Um, one more time, I'd like to thank our guest, Chris Kaler, for coming on the show. And please go see him um, on YouTube. And um, if you need any more um, information, we'll have that on our with links on our uh, our Facebook and our our web page. Also, want to thank everyone who called or tried to call in tonight. I, I really apologize for that. Um, We'll get that figured out, I promise you. Our creative producer, Beyond the Strange, is Rick Sennett. Co-host is LJ3, or Les Johnson III. Retweets and postings by Dennis Koch and Gunny Jean Vateau. Music is by Alan Hall and Melody Loops. Intro by Casper Parks and Space Boy. Visit Spaceboy at spaceboymusic.com. Bumps and Drops by Brian Anderson and Gunny Jean Vateau. You can hear more of Brian at BrianAndersonVoice.com Tech Advisory by Brian Anderson and remember next week we will be live at Contact in the Desert 6pm Pacific so don't you don't want to miss that show trust me it's, it's going to be awesome so remember everyone have a good night be safe, be happy but most of all be strange Hasta. Awesome.